Hello there. Welcome to my video on the very fundamental basics of OBS Studio. This is going to be a video that covers just the bare minimum you need to start streaming, maybe on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Gaming, Trovo, wherever you may want to stream. This is going to be a very basic, bare bones setup to get you started. Nothing crazy, no overlays, nothing complicated. So let's start with the very, very basics of OBS Studio. Before you choose to use OBS Studio, you need to understand that there are pros and cons to using OBS Studio. With OBS Studio, you can use a multitude of different plugins to create a variety of different effects. Things like the StreamFX plugin. These third-party plugins can give you the variety that you need to stand out above the rest. OBS Studio is also way more friendly when it comes to third-party integrations, things like StreamerBot or FireBot. OBS Studio also is initially less resource-intensive, meaning that it's not going to use as much of your CPU or GPU as maybe something like Streamlabs OBS, making it a little bit easier for you to use something like a laptop to broadcast from. But with OBS Studio, there are cons as with anything. OBS Studio does have a few drawbacks that when you install the plugins, they're not always easy to uninstall. And sometimes that will require you to have to go through a bunch of different hoops to uninstall a plugin that doesn't work for you or just is flat out not designed well. OBS Studio doesn't have the easy integration of an uh, alert box, the chat widget, those kinds of things that maybe Streamlabs OBS offers already built in. It's going to require you to learn more about how to operate the software than Streamlabs OBS is. Because OBS Studio provides a ridiculous range of resources and plugins and things available to you, it can get extremely overwhelming if you're just starting out. The biggest reason I choose OBS Studio over every other broadcast software is the fact that it does allow for so much creativity and allows for so many unique opportunities to create as if this was a painting. It's fantastic, but it takes time to learn. When you open up OBS Studio, you will see that this is pretty much the way that it comes up. It will already have your first scene. You always have to have one scene in there. So let's go ahead and let's talk about setting this up for streaming first. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into the settings, go down to stream. Right here is going to give you on OBS 28, the immediate choice of where you wanna to stream to. And it'll bring up the major streaming platforms. If you don't see the platform you wanna stream with on here, you can hit show all and it will bring up a gigantic list. I mean, if you really want an OnlyFans, you can totally stream to OnlyFans now. What is strip chat? If you don't find the platform that you're looking for to stream on, you can always use the custom settings and add the server. Usually that's going to be the website you're broadcasting to and a stream key. That is the private key that tells the server exactly where you need your stream to go. So that way you're not, you know, accidentally streaming on my channel. If it needs authentication and you actually have to sign in, you just click that username and password goes in. But let's just go ahead and say you're wanting to stream on Twitch. You'll hit connect account. It's going to take a minute. Connecting with Twitch is as simple as entering your username, password, and hitting login. Once you have done those settings, just hit apply and you'll be good to go. Now let's talk about setting up your actual base canvas and what you need to actually create your scenes and your visual appeal. You will need to come to where it says base canvas resolution. Now this is the size that your screen will be. Normally you want the 1920 by 1080. That is pretty standard for Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, many others. If you wanted to stream from TikTok, like you actually wanted to do a stream with TikTok from OBS, just invert the number 1080 by 1920, that will give you the vertical ratio you need. The output scaled resolution, you can actually keep this the same as your base canvas if you wanted to, but if it's too resource intensive on your PC or your upload speed, you can change that to downscale it automatically to the same size, just a little bit smaller. You also have your frames per second. 30 frames a second is usually pretty solid and a great place to start from. If you make it to where you have the availability to do 60 frames a second and you can actually manage that, you can adjust it down here. But once you have those settings how you want it, you just go ahead and hit apply and those settings are saved. Next up, let's go to the output. This is where we're gonna start setting up how our 
upload is going to work, how our recording settings would work, and how our audio settings are going to move forward. On the simple settings, you can do this. However, uh, everybody is will always recommend going into advanced settings. It's going to change things and make it look a little bit more complicated, but I promise you it's not terrible. In advanced settings, this is going to give you a little bit more control on how you're going to want to work your stream. On the audio track right here, you will see there's two different ones if you're doing Twitch, and this only works for Twitch. You can select audio track one, and that will stream everything on audio track one out to your stream. If you do a Twitch VOD track, if you enable this and have it as track two, anything on track two will get sent to the VOD. Anything on track one will not. This is particularly useful if you are streaming music from Spotify and you really want to avoid copyright strikes. This is something that can help where you can stream, but it doesn't stay on on your VOD content. For your encoder, there are two different settings. There's the NVIDIA NVENC and there's the X264. Understanding the difference between these two is going to make a world of difference when it comes to PC performance. The NVIDIA NVENC encoder is probably going to be the one you will want to use. That uses your graphics card to encode all the video settings and turning it into digital code. You're gonna want to use the NVENC encoder mainly due to the fact that the GPU can handle the encoding process far better than the CPU process. X264 is using your CPU to actually generate the encoding. A lot of times, if you use X264, the CPU cannot handle that load, but your GPU can. So using X264 is kind of a last resort if your GPU can't handle it. You're going to want to use Task Manager while either streaming or recording to understand if your CPU usage is going to be more free than your GPU usage. This is going to help you determine which encoding setting you need to go with. You're most likely going to use NVIDIA NVENC because your GPU has more room to work with in the encoding process than your CPU does. Your CPU is already running numerous other programs in the background to just keep your computer running. If we choose NVENC, we can rescale the output here if we need to, if the full 1080p is too much, and we can downscale it to 1280 to 720. That's a little bit lower definition, or if you really needed to drop it, you can go down to 480 and that is standard definition. There is nothing wrong with streaming at standard definition if that's all your computer can handle. So what we're going to do with the NVIDIA NVENC encoder is we're going to give you the most standard practice of setting this up, which is usually the rate control for CBR. Your bit rate, this is going to be determined by a lot of different factors. When it comes to your bit rate, it is definitely going to be a matter of balancing a variety of factors. It's going to take understanding what your upload speed is, which I recommend running a speed test, understanding how much room you have on your upload, because if you only have five megabytes of upload speed, you do not want to be using 5,000 kilobits to upload. That's just not going to work for you. You'd probably want to work with something more around 2,500 kilobits. You would need to downscale your output down to standard definition to compensate for that. When we talk about bitrate, the max bitrate accepted by most platforms is 6,000 kilobits. Now, if you have the availability for 6,000 kilobits, you can do a full 1080p 60 frames a second. But if you can only really work with something like 2,000 kilobits upload, a 720 p at 30 frames a second is going to be a better way of setting up your settings for this running a simple speed test will help you determine how much room you have to work with because if you're playing an online multiplayer game you have to factor that into your upload speed because you're having to upload your gameplay as well as your stream my general rule when working with bitrate for upload speed is i never want to use more than 20 percent of my total upload speed for my stream play with these settings because that's how you're going to determine what's going to be the most effective and stable for you. They'd rather watch standard definition than watch a choppy stream. Let's say I have the availability to go full scale and I can do 1080p 60 frames a second and I wanna use every bit I can for Twitch. Well, then we'll do the 6,000 kilobits per second. On your keyframe interval, you wanna set it to two. Your preset you can leave at quality, profile high. Your GPU you wanna be at zero and max B frames at two. If you are using the X264, you do need to make sure your rate control is CBR. Your bit rate, however, you need to set that as the same as we're doing in the NVENC. Your keyframe interval is still going to be two. CPU usage, you want to set to fast, very fast. And your profile high, and the reason for the profile being high is going to make sure that your CPU is prioritizing OBS over some of your other background processes. Tune. 
Don't even worry about it. Just set it to none. Moving on to the recording, you will see that you can actually record your streams. You can record video. Your recording path, you'll just set where you want your recordings to save to. The recording format, you can do MKV or you can do MP4. MKV will allow you a little bit more freedom when you do video editing. MP4 is just easy to upload. You can make sure that it, if you do not want any of the stuff that was live streamed when you're setting up Twitch VODs, ah, eh? remember that? If you just change it to track two, your audio track two here, then make sure that you're not capturing anything you didn't mean to. For the encoder, I would always recommend using the same encoder as your stream. It's less intensive on your PC. It is much easier to work with. You can change it if you want to, but I would just recommend staying with that. You can do automatic file splitting on OBS 28, which means you can actually, on your recording, separate it by time, by size, or you can split it manually, set up a hotkey where you can actually timestamp when you you want things to stop. This is incredibly useful, especially when you're taking your live streams and putting them into long form content on YouTube, split up chapter by chapter what you're streaming into a more bite sized kind of content. Ban fantastic use. Moving on to the audio settings, this is where you can actually identify each individual track. OBS Studio goes up to six different tracks, so you can have six different levels of audio you want. I usually stick with 160 audio bitrate. It has served me well, but if you really want to go high quality and go all out, you can set it for 320, which is the max bitrate on your audio. You can also name these, so this would be like the live stream. I drug on here a little bit, but anyway, you can set up these tracks however you want. You want a microphone on one, gameplay on another, music on another. You can divide these tracks up to make sure that you can manage your audio for editing much easier. The replay buffer, this is mainly to create instant clips. Do understand with replay buffer, you are going to need extra space on your RAM, not the CPU or GPU, your RAM, because all that video will be stored up in random access memory, dropping off one second, adding another and constantly flowing the video. Incredibly useful if you want to have a hotkey to set up instant clips. So if you really liked something you did, no one's in chat and you needed to clip it, you can hotkey it and bam, you have a clip. And then it's saved automatically to your PC. So if you want to enable the replay buffer that gives it to where that amount of time is going to be running. Now you can set it for any amount of time you want. So you can do 20 seconds. If you really, really want to get crazy and do uh, 600 seconds, you totally can. Down here, it's going to show you estimated memory usage. And that is referring to how much RAM that is going to be used while the replay buffer is enabled. So make sure that you have checked to see if you have adequate availability on your RAM to use how much you're trying to have your replay buffer for. Plus saving your clips to the PC saves you the hassle of downloading from like Twitch or Facebook or something like that. And they've already compressed that video file down and you've lost some quality. This lets you actually still have high quality clips at the beginning before you re-upload them. Once we have all our output settings done, just click apply and then we can move forward. On the audio tab, this is gonna let you set up your different audio devices. On the global audio devices, this is where you can set up your microphone, capture cards, any kind of audio input, or even capture the output of all the audio from your desktop. You can set this up right here. So setting up a microphone to be a global thing that you can use in every single scene, you would just click down on the mic and auxiliary and you'd scroll down and find your microphone. For me, it's my Beacon mic or maybe I want to use my HyperX Quadcast. Yes, I have both plugged in. We wanted to make sure that everything we are hearing can be heard by everyone else. You can have the desktop audio set to your output and which me, I'm doing it through my speakers. If you wanted to do your monitoring device, your monitoring device is actually what you hear. So this is going to provide you if you want to hear the alerts in your stream this is setting where you want to hear those alerts from when we start getting into building our scenes and dealing with the mixer i'm going to be able to show you how you can set things you maybe want to hear your mic or maybe you don't when it comes to audio there's two different ways you can actually approach it you can approach it in the audio tab and make it a very universal thing and manually control it or you can set it up as sources in your scenes to where maybe one scene will have your microphone, another scene won't. Me personally, I like having a little bit more control. I like to set up my microphone as a source per scene because maybe on my be right back screen, I don't want people to hear what's going on. Maybe I need to take step away and make sure nobody hears what's going on because maybe my kids are going nuts and I really don't want everybody to hear why my girls are fighting today. You may not. You may want to use the audio tab and set up everything to where it will be there nonstop. 
it's up to you. So once you have your audio settings like you want, you just hit apply and you're good to go there. One thing I do want to point out on the advanced tab is your process priority. Your process priority is telling your computer where OBS Studio is going to rank in the hierarchy of all the other programs running. I typically just go ahead and set it as above normal to make sure that things are being processed on my stream more efficiently rather than Microsoft Word deciding it wanted to update. I like to make sure that my computer is prioritizing my stream over an update or other background process that is not necessary while I'm streaming. Automatic reconnect is something that I highly recommend stay enabled. That's in case you should become disconnected, your stream doesn't deactivate immediately, and you can keep streaming if there is a sudden drop in your network. Now that we've gone through all those, we need to set up our scene. So we have the first scene available here. If you needed to add a second scene, you can here. So let's just call this one the just chatting screen. So we've set up a whole nother scene. This way you can switch between the two. To set up your first scene, you're gonna to wanna to go over here into sources and click the add. Now there's a lot of different options that you can do here, especially in OBS 28. You're going to wanna to set up your webcam. The webcam, you're gonna use the video capture device. This will also be for if you're using a capture card to capture console play. Here we're gonna put webcam and we'll hit okay. And then you would pick here and scroll through to find the webcam you want to use. So here I've set up my webcam up here. I'm actually using my phone for this one. Hi, everybody. If you need to use the webcam mic, select use custom audio device and just choose your webcam's microphone that's built in in the drop down. You can hit a OK and you're good to go. And now we need to get our gameplay in here. So let's say you're streaming from an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Nintendo Switch. You have a capture card. How do I set the capture card up? It's actually the same process as the webcam. You're going to go into video capture device. You're going to rename this and then we're going to do the same process. And voila, there it is. If you have a different capture card that maybe that audio doesn't come up, you will just use that custom audio device again and you'll just find that audio source and put it in. So now we have that, but now we can't see us in the webcam. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, we can adjust the size of this by simply grabbing a corner and moving it. We're slowly revealing my face or the other way you can approach this is if you right click the source, it'll come up with this list of different things you can do. You can go to transform and if you really want to do it this way, you can hit edit transform six pixels by nine, 19 pixels super small but it's there. If you wanted to make sure that it is more perfectly aligned, you can do center vertically and that'll put it right in the dead center making it a nice even split. So we've got a webcam, we've got the gameplay, we've got one scene. Now let's go back to the previous scene. There's nothing there. If you click add in the video capture device again, if you click the add existing, you already have these sources built in. So let's just go ahead and add the gameplay, add the webcam and those are back. And then we can take this, shrink it down. And now you have two different scenes to work with. You have a variety of ways to make things visually more appealing. Maybe you wanted to have your microphone in here as a separate source. Now it's already automatically added in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that. Now the reason I'm gonna go ahead and mute that is because I'm doing this for a demonstration purpose. That microphone's already going and already discovered into the software, but let's talk about how to put a microphone in one scene and make sure it's not in another. This is how I approach this. So what you'll do is you'll actually go up to audio input capture, any input source, such as a microphone, capture card, or even multiple microphones, you would add this way. Add that as a source, and then you just find it in the dropdown, and there it is. And you just hit OK. Then in the audio mixer over here, you'll see that it's right there. What if we needed a second mic because maybe we're doing more of a podcast style? Well, then you just add a separate microphone. So now we're just going to call this my Hyper X Quadcast. My Hyper X Quadcast. Hit OK, then I'm going to find that one, click it, put it in, and then on the audio mixer, it will appear. It may be a little bit out of order, but it's there. Now I can actually mute the different microphone. When we go to a different scene like this, those microphones are now gone. When you don't want micro a microphone in a certain scene, now it doesn't have to be. You've got to be a little bit more careful about setting up this way, but it is an option. We've got our microphone. We've got a camera, we've got our gameplay. Well, what if we're doing a, a single PC setup and we wanted to capture the game from this PC? You can actually do that going through game capture. When using game capture, you will have to have the game you are playing already running 
before you add it into OBS. That's just because OBS doesn't know what to look for initially. So when you're adding a game capture, make sure you're naming it the game you want to run. When you come in here, you can capture any full screen application and see if it will work. But as you can see, it did not capture Jackbox games like I wanted. I'll go down here to capture the specific window and then I will choose the game that I want. And there it pops up. So now it's capturing my Jackbox games like I've wanted. Once you've done that, you hit OK. And it's not quite the size I want it to be. Now I can sit and, you know, manually expand it to how I want or right click, go to transform. I can just hit fit to screen and voila, it's automatically fitting to the screen I want. If I wanted to have my capture card up on top of that, all I have to do is click and drag my sources. And now I've got two different games running for absolutely no reason. But what if I wanted to hide this and didn't want it to appear? Just click the eyeball and it's gone, but it's not disappeared from there. So you can actually move it around where you want it to be and you can bring it back. Additionally, here on the desktop audio, this is going to capture everything that's going out from your computer. So if you start winding up hearing a bunch of different echoes, you can always mute that and that might take away a lot of that problem. One of the last things you're probably going to want to add is an alert system. So things like somebody followed your channel, you can make sure that you acknowledge them in some way, shape or form. This in OBS Studio is done through browser sources. Now you can use Streamlabs, you can use Stream Elements, you can use a variety of different providers for this service. But let's go ahead and let's look at how you can use Streamlabs as your alert widget in OBS Studio. So first off, you'll need to go to streamlabs.com and you're gonna wanna go to the login. Log in with whichever platform you want. When you're in the dashboard, you're gonna go over to the alert box and right here, click to copy the URL widget, just copy it. In OBS Studio, you'll hit that plus icon on your sources again, you'll hit this one says browser Streamlabs alert in here you're going to see this initially pop up what you're going to do is you're going to take out the url that's already sitting there and you're going to go ahead and take that copied alert box and put it in here the widget size you can actually leave it at 800 by 600 and that would do just fine for Streamlabs. one thing i do like to click is this control audio via obs sometimes your audio is not going to come through the way you want and you need to have a little bit more control what this is going to do is put this source as an audio part in the mixer. So when you scroll down in the mixer, you're gonna see Streamlabs Alerts is now here and you can adjust the volume as you need to. But now that we've got those alerts up, let's go ahead and make sure that they actually appear. And there is the alert, it pops up, looking good. See, 800 by 600 works. You can also adjust the sizing on the alert box and you can play with the size as you want to from there. That way it is not distorting too much. Okay, the last thing I do want to mention, if you want to use every single source in here for another scene, if you right click the scene name, you can actually come to duplicate and we'll do Yeah, sure. Just chatting screen number two, it will give you an exact copy of all this and you can rearrange things as you want. So now I can take this move it over into this corner, same sources, different placement. That is everything you need to get started in streaming. That is the very bare minimum of what you need to get going. If this video has been helpful to you in any way, shape or form, hitting that subscribe button will also give you the ability to keep following these tutorials as we go, because we are gonna get into more advanced videos. The next video that's coming, it's going to be going over how to set up overlays with scene nesting, how to make sure that you're grouping things together to make it easier for you to move Move items around as a group. We're going to make sure that we give you a great foundation to start from when building your visual representation of your content. I also appreciate any kind of feedback you have on this video. I would love to know if I'm doing well. If I'm not, I need a little bit of information. I don't make a lot of these videos and I would like to, and I just need to know if I'm heading in the right direction. All right, I'm Gene. I'll see you on the next video.